Hey guys, how's it going? Producer engineer Alex Scott here with Concertini.com coming at you guys with a basic recording tutorial today. Um, in my day-to-day -day work as a professional record producer, recording engineer, mixing engineer, all of these weird random things that I do, um, one of the most common clients that I get, whether it be for production or mixing or whatever, are people who are at home and they're either a singer-songwriter type who maybe plays acoustic guitar, piano, writes songs and sings, rappers or R&B, hip-hop, pop singers, any of that kind of thing, people who make beats and then rap or sing over them. Um, and you'll notice, talking about these clients, there is one common thread and that is vocal performance, okay? And working with all these different clients, you know, I work with people who are seasoned professionals and have been doing it for years and have really high quality recording setups. And then I work with a lot of people who are total newcomers, amateurs, novices uh, in the world of recording. And whether you're a seasoned pro or an amateur, there is a basic level of equipment and setup that you're going to want to be able to use and have in order to record good quality vocals. So I'm gonna run through a few of those things uh, here in this video today to just give you guys a basic idea of what you need and how to set up a really great, simple, inexpensive, keyword inexpensive, vocal recording system, okay? And there's really, very few components that you really need. There's five basic ones, okay? The first thing, obviously, is going to be a microphone. I've got one here. This is a very inexpensive microphone. This is a little bit of a weird one. This is called an Octava MK319. It is a vintage Soviet mic. Uh, it's got a really cool tone to it, but the important thing is that you can get it used for between $70 and $100. Really good sounding little mic. It sounds a bit different than a lot of other microphones because it is an older mic and just the way that they've designed it, it has kind of a dark vintage sound to it. But really the key thing to understand when you're choosing a vocal microphone is that um, as long as it is what we call a large diaphragm condenser microphone, which I don't want to get into the technicality of what exactly that means, but it is the best option for a good, clean, modern sounding vocal mic. You can find large diaphragm condensers at Guitar Center for as little as $50. A great starter one is the MXL 990. It has a very modern, clean sound. If you have a little bit more to invest, I always recommend the Rode NT1A, okay? It's a silver guy, um, and it comes with some really great accessories as well. That one usually you can find for around $200 new. But again, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a mic. Obviously, the better quality mic you can afford, you should go for, but even if you have the budget, I would recommend starting with something a little bit less expensive and a little bit simpler so that you can learn how to use it and get a great sound out of it, and then you can go and maybe try some of these different microphones because they all sound a little bit different, especially when you get up into those higher price points. Um, so I've met some people who just, you know, if they have a lot of money to invest, but they've never bought something like this before, they go out and buy something really expensive that doesn't necessarily suit their, the sound of their voice. So if you are looking at investing a lot of money into a vocal mic, that's great, but be sure to try out a number of them wherever you can and however you can to make sure that the mic that you're spending the, the, all that money on uh, suits your voice and works with the sound of your voice really, really well. If you have a very bright, high, S-E, sibilant, airy kind of a voice, a really bright microphone is not a good choice because it's going to make those things stand out even more than they might already. You might want to buy a darker mic so that it comes out the other end more even. That kind of a thing, okay? So um, don't just go and run out and buy something really expensive because it's expensive. You want to really take your time and try them out. But for the vast majority of us, we don't have a huge budget. And if you're not working with a huge budget, you don't need to worry about sk sacrificing or skimping on the quality of your recordings. As long as you use these components, use them well, take your time, set it up correctly, um, and check your gain correctly, we'll get to that in a minute, um, you're going to come out the other side with a great recording, even if you're using a very inexpensive $50 or $100 microphone like this one. So that's our microphone. The next thing you're going to need is a cable, uh, an XLR cable. I have the end of one right down here. This is what a normal microphone cable looks like. It has three pins in it, if you can see there on the camera. Um, and this is going to go into the bottom of your microphone. Um, that's another really easy test to see if your microphone is, is of a good vocal recording quality. If it uses any other plug than this or something that looks like this, 
it's probably not a super high quality microphone. So this is another important thing and you will need a cable. Um, a super basic cable will do you fine. There's no real reason, again, until you get up into a very high end studio world to use a cable that costs any more than 20 or 30 bucks. Um, or sometimes you can find them for even cheaper than that. So cable. And then the next thing that you're going to need, which is here supporting all of this lovely stuff, is a microphone stand. Again, you do not need to buy the nicest one unless you're touring rigorously or have a big studio. Any old cheapo easy mic stand that you find used somewhere or at a guitar center will do fine. You shouldn't expect to spend more than 20 or 30 bucks there. The next thing that I highly recommend I'll take these headphones off here for a second, is this device right here, okay? This is called a pop filter or a plosive filter. Um, because of the physics of how sound work within the, mu within the human mouth, um, no matter what language you speak or no matter what style of music you're singing, at some point you're going to make a p sound, a p sound. You're also going to make a b sound and a d sound, okay? And the the mechanics of what your mouth is doing when you make a P, okay? You see, you hold your mouth closed and then you open it and what makes the P sound of a P is you releasing a big torrent of air out of your mouth. The diaphragm in your microphone does not like that at all. It doesn't like this big tsunami of air pressure just whacking it in the face, okay? And you're gonna experience clipping and all kinds of weird plosive noises with that. This filter, this plosive or pop filter, okay, it's just a very thin piece of, you can see you can poke right through it, okay, um, it's a thin piece of mesh fabric, it doesn't affect the sound in any way, all it does is it's a buffer to make sure that if you accidentally make one of these strong P or B plosive noises, as we call them, it's going to stop that tsunami of air. It's going to let all the sound and all the tone through. It's not going to change the actual sound. It's just going to prevent that big blast of air from hitting your uh, microphone and causing these noise artifacts or even potentially damaging it, depending on how loud you're, you're singing or speaking into it. Okay. Pop filters, again, very inexpensive. They can be bought at Guitar Center or anywhere online for well under $30. Um, this one, I think, was 15 um, at my local mom and pop music shop. Um, and, you know, it just screws on very, very simply, very easily to our microphone stand using this screw here. We can take it off. We can fold it up. We can store it. It's very simple, um, you know, basically indestructible as well. I've even seen guys, I have even seen people get really creative and make their own using things like uh, pantyhose or um, leggings or any of that kind of thing. Now, that to me is a little bit more trouble than it's worth since you can usually buy one for about 10 or $15. Um, but you are going to want to put a pop filter in front of your microphone. And usually anywhere from two, three, four, five, six inches off the mic um, is totally fine. You don't want it way out here. And you also don't want it like pressed up against the mic like this. You just want to space it a little bit away um, so that it keeps everything nice and in line. Okay. Now the last thing that you're going to want is a decent pair, not an expensive pair, not a crazy pair, just a decent pair of headphones, specifically over the ear, what we call closed back headphones. Okay, so there's a, a hard plastic shell over this, this headphone that keeps all the sound inside. So when I put them on, um, obviously you guys aren't me, so you can't hear it, but um, it deadens all the sound outside in the room. Okay. And it also prevents anything I'm listening to in the headphones from coming out and being picked up by the microphone. So as I'm singing along to my song, the microphone can only hear me. It doesn't hear anything spilling out of the sides of the headphones. And I can hear very, very clearly everything that I need to in the headphones. Now, a couple of techniques that you might want to keep in mind that vary from singer to singer, and you'll have to find your, your own happy middle ground with this. Some singers like to be totally have the headphones all the way on, on both sides, okay? And they like to hear a lot of themselves, a lot of the sound coming from the microphone in their headphones. Some singers like to take one ear out, kind of like this. And that is so that they can hear the sound of their voice naturally in the room, in this ear, or alternately in this ear, you know, whichever way you do it. And then in the other ear, they have nice, um, you know, the, the track playing back or whatever. Some uh, I've seen some vocalists take all the way off and have one ear completely exposed. Um, 
you know, you're, you're never really going to have vocalists that do anything like this because now, or like this or something where neither ear is on because then you really just can't hear the song. <laughs> but um, whether you have one ear totally exposed, partially exposed, or both ears fully covered, those are three different ways to use your headphones and just do whatever feels most comfortable to you. They're all going to result in um, really great recordings. Obviously, the more you have a headphone off, the higher the chance of bleed going back into the microphone because it's not fully sealed around your ear, so you might have a little spill. Um, but whatever is most comfortable for you as a singer um, is what you should go ahead and do. Now, this particular pair of headphones is a Tascam TH02. Um, again, I paid about 15 bucks for these uh, on Amazon, I think, or something like that, and uh, totally fine headphones. You know, you don't need them to sound amazing. You want them to sound as good as you, as you can afford. Um, but the more important thing is that they have this closed back design so that no sound leaks from inside to out or outside to in. They have good isolation to them, as we would say. And that's pretty much it. So now when you start to actually sit down to record, the, the main thing that you're going to be worried about from there is simply the gain on your preamp. Okay, we have another video on the channel that talks all about preamps, what they are, how they work, um, and why you don't necessarily need to buy a very expensive one. Um, but if you were watching this video, I'm assuming you at least have some kind of audio interface, right? A box that you plug into your computer that lets you record, and you can plug a microphone into it. Well, those boxes have preamps built into them, and you'll usually have a little knob that says gain on it, and that's going to control your recording volume. And the only thing you want to worry about in terms of that and setting that up is that basically, as a general rule of thumb, quieter is better. You don't want it to be insanely quiet, but a really easy way to do it is to, to grab your gain knob. We'll just pretend this knob right here is my gain knob on the preamp and sing into your microphone at whatever volume you're, you're going to be singing, whatever the loudest you feel. So if I'm going to sing up here and this is the loudest, keep doing that. Turn your, uh, your knob up until um, basically you have a good amount of signal. You're in the green on, you know, whether you're in your recording program or whatever, it'll show you on a little meter, right? The little, uh, all the green lights that light up when there's sound in a row. Um, you want that in the green, but you never, ever want to see red. That's the most important thing because red means that you are peaking or clipping or distorting, which means that it's too loud, basically, and um, the system can't handle it. So you start to get <laughs> that really nasty distortion sound. So you just want to turn it up until there's a good amount of green, but no real yellow and definitely no red. That's the main thing you want to watch out for. And it's really as simple as that. And then from there, once you've got your recording done, we could go into talking about editing and effects and mixing and all this kind of stuff, but we will save those for other videos. Um, again, the main purpose here is just to get you guys acquainted with the basic equipment that you're going to need to record a vocal, um, how to get it set up, plugged in, all that kind of stuff, and um, get you on your way to some great first recordings. Um, but what uh, thoughts do you guys have on the matter? What are some of your favorite beginner vocal mics or favorite headphones or um, any other tips or tricks that you have for beginning uh, people who are just starting their journey in, in recording their own their own vocals, definitely let us know in the comments down below. We always appreciate hearing from you guys. Um, again, my name is Alex Scott with Concertini.com. Hopefully you guys have found this video helpful in getting your first vocal recording set up, uh, and uh, we will see you in the next video.